running over stuff. You ever have those weeks or months or whatever where you're just completely scatterbrained and you don't know what's going on? Well, for me, I think it's because I'm moving. Anytime I try to move stuff, like from the warehouse to the new place, uh, everything just gets all weird and some of the medical problems get worse. And anyways, today I wanted to do something fun and that's what we're gonna do. I hopped on Amazon last night. I was trying to figure out what I wanted to record for a video today and I was like, ah, oh, let's install a stereo on the chair. I haven't done that since 2017 actually on my old original Amy Systems Ultrac M3 that I got. So we're gonna do that today. I hopped on Amazon, I found something that would be delivered today, which was overnight. And uh, yeah, let's take a look and see what we got in the box. Oh, and I, I filmed a bunch of this and had to skip over a bunch of parts because insert excuses, whatever. It's, it's pretty rapid fire. Hopefully you enjoy. So what we have here, ooh, it's heavy. This is a motorcycle and or ATV stereo. So the idea is we're going to put a stereo on my chair because I feel like I want to rock out to things. Uh, it's got a couple external antennas, one for Bluetooth, one for FM radio. But the cool thing is it has this little wired remote here. So this can control pretty much everything. Oh, the amplifier box is a little bigger than I thought. Um, I was gonna try and put this inside here. Oh, maybe it'll fit. Well, anyways, now this does run on 12 volts, so not normally power chair compatible, but I have that power conversion box. Here's the speakers. There's two of these. I think I'm gonna put them on the back of the chair. So anyways, I'm going to grab some tools, hop onto the floor, and we're gonna see if we can slam this thing onto this chair because, uh, yeah, I want music. Okay, here on the side of the chair. Yeah. Yeah, there's not a lot of room in here. So this is our amplifier. And while the box is probably deep enough for it to fit in there, we have other stuff in the way. So I don't think this will be going in there. There is one other spot on this chair though, and that is whoops, as I run over myself and throw that on the floor. And that is right here under the right side. I think I might be able to mount this like that. So it'll hang down a tiny bit and I'll probably black that out so you can't see what it says. But right there will clear the, the light here and also the fender. I know because I've had stuff installed there before, but I think that's what we're gonna have to do is mount it right there. This thing is a metal housing with some plastic tabs on it, and they are on the bottom, obviously. So I'm gonna have to figure out a way to mount this this way, or maybe, actually I guess if I flip it around, then I don't have to paint the letters on it. This is our line, like our aux line input here, and it's got Bluetooth, and yeah, looks like that's about it. Yeah, I think right there is going to work. All right, cool. Well, I'm going to have to pull off the cushion and maybe the seat pan. Because I think what we're going to do is mount this to the bottom of the seat pan. We could use hot glue, but that comes off, I found. So I'm probably going to take this apart. And I've got some of those little insulated um, cable tie things. So I'm going to take this apart and see if maybe I can drill a couple mounting holes in it or something like that. But anyways, I'm gonna play around with this. I'll be back. Well, looky here. There's actually a lot of space inside this thing. It's just one of those little class D amplifiers. Uh, actually, I thought those are MOSFETs, but I think that's the amplifier chip there. You can see the screws for the heat sink right there. But this whole side is pretty much completely open. And we've got a couple of antenna wires going up there. Hmm. You know, other than that heat sinking, 
it doesn't really even need to be in this box, but uh, yeah, we got plenty of room there for mounting, mounting activities. So, uh, oh, I think what I should do, I'm gonna power this thing up and make sure it works before we go modifying everything. Uh, so let's do that real quick. Uh, as it turns out, this little pigtail is actually for the remote, but we've got the speakers connected here. We've got the power wire hooked up and it's running down here to this arrangement. And let's give it uh, 12.4 volts. And I think our polarity is correct. Let's turn it on and see what happens. Uh, press and hold. Bluetooth. Whoa, that is loud. Uh, let's get a Bluetooth device in here. Okay, we have a device connected. Bluetooth is connected. Oh my God, how do we... How do we turn this down? Do you... Well, seems to work maybe. Let's see, volume. Oh, it's pressing the wrong buttons, that's why. There's our volume. Can we play and pause? Ooh, we can play and pause and it blinks. Okay, so it sounds decent, just no bass, but we do have, whoops, careful. We do have this other output over here that I saw that says subwoofer. So I don't know how you put a subwoofer on a power chair, but um, yeah. Okay, this will work. It powers up. Excellent. Uh, shut her down. Okay, what I've decided to do, I can't find my um, tap kits, but I do have some tech screws. So what I'm doing right now is I'm going to pull everything out of the inside of this. I've already... I've already pulled the screws out that hold on the heat sink thing, but we're gonna pull everything out of here like so. There we go. Oh look, there's heat sink compound in there. So the plan now is to basically drill a couple holes in this that are close to the size of these tech screws. Then I'll use those to thread this. Then we will drill a couple holes in my seat pan and we'll mount this thing in there vertically under my chair. Then we can put all the stuff back together. But yeah, that uh, that's a whole amplifier on a chip there. Kind of cool. Uh, yeah, anyways. Only problem is my old uh, 2008 DeWalt batteries are not exactly doing what they're supposed to. So it'd probably better to use the drill press anyways. The only problem with the drill press is I don't know where the chuck key went for it. And... Yeah, anyways, well, I'm gonna see if we can get these batteries revived and then we will start drilling some more holes on the other side here. Oh wait, so I just remembered, I do have one good tool battery left and I've been using it in this job site stereo. So let's go ahead and pull that out of here and uh, that will save us from having to screw around with everything, excellent. Oh yeah, good enough. Uh, there's a very faint label on Sharpie on this old one. It says three. So I think that means it might still be good. Uh, what we're gonna do though, is use this job site radio for its um, intended purpose. This is one of those things that's not, not a job site radio. It's a battery charger. And this allows people to charge their DeWalt batteries because it has a cord right here. And then the, the battery charger happens to have a radio built in. So I remember that was in the, that was the thing back in the day. This, this was built, I think, before smartphones. Plug this in uh, like so. Yep, we got the little light here on the front. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> and also, it's a radio. <laughs> I love the uh, early 2000s. So we will set this right here on top of my 
two head VCR that has a USB port on the front of it that's used for copying uh, VHS tapes onto the computer. Oh man, there's so much stuff everywhere in here. Um, yeah, so quick update on the moving. As you can see, the streaming computer is gone. I've used my seat lift and gotten some of the crap off the walls. Old Indiana Jones here is no longer on the wall. And I might try and rip that down, but I might get showered in staples if I do that. And I've got the table over here. Um, anyways, we're gonna let this charge for a few minutes before we continue, but. Oh yeah, that by the way is the license plate off the old green van that tried to kill me a long time ago. So that's always fun. I'm gonna let some batteries charge and then um, be back. I suppose whilst we are waiting for batteries to charge, we can look at mounting the speakers on the back of this thing. And I have an idea for that. Hang on, I should probably mute the music. We've got these two speakers here, and these have some standoff clamps that are supposed to go on motorcycle handlebars. So I'm thinking we might be able to put those standoffs here and either point these like this way or maybe down or something like that. Let's see what we've got for mounting hardware here. Oh, those are a bit bigger than I thought, but the general idea would be these clamp around right here. We might have to make some spacers. Um, yeah, I think that will work. And if we get these in the right spot, they shouldn't interfere with anything here as far as the chair reclining or tilting or whatnot. Oh, I keep forgetting there's a camera back here. So I think what we might do here is I'm gonna find, I don't know, maybe, maybe some PVC pipe or some other piece of conduit or something I can cut in half. And we'll figure it out. Now if I can just find those pieces. I found one of them, so... Let's do that again, but we'll put it inside this weird fiberglass thing to keep them from flying too far away. Whoa, that went all the way across the warehouse. Holy crap. It landed way back there somewhere and I don't know where the other piece went. Okay, so I was trying to make a couple of these. So, this is the last bit we have, so let's trim this down. And then I think we'll have to use a hacksaw or something, because that seems a little bit dangerous. Okay. Hmm. Oh, there's a piece right there. Where's my grabber stick? Okay, so we have, we have two of them now. Um, let's see. Okay, so we've got two. We just need to make one more. All right, my evil plan to save the world is working. So we basically just put these two halves on here and now our little clamp thing can go on there. There's a an Allen bolt underneath here. I had to loosen that to rotate this because I just test fit it and I want those speakers firing out to the sides. So, um, I'm gonna get the side clamped on here and then see how it works. Okay, I do believe this will work quite nicely. These are supposedly weather resistant, but I'm not in the rain too much. But this part of the chair doesn't change position from here. This tilts a little bit, but also if you notice, the armrest can go up and that clears just fine. Uh, these things will pivot a little bit, but not more than this. And uh, yeah, I think that will get the job done. Uh, these are plastic, whatever, the listing said metal, but that's fine. And, uh, yeah, you can see our little, little clamp down there. So, anyways, I'm gonna get the other side done. Then we will move on to wiring. Ah, uh, freaking GoPro, man. So, 
I just recorded drilling the holes in this and now we're tapping it with the tech screws. But the GoPro had other plans and decided it didn't want to record any of that. So anyways, we're just uh, driving in the tech screws right now. So basically what I did was I got a drill bit that was a little bit smaller than these to make it easier because this is this is pretty thick material right here. And now we're using the tech screws to tap the holes. Which probably go lower speed. Need to be careful there's a chance these could break off in here and that's not what I want. There we go. Okay. Now, is this still recording? Now we have a case with two tapped holes and we can move on to mounting this to the bottom of the seat pan. So basically this box is gonna mount right about here where this blotch of hot glue and tape is, something like that. But we need to position this correctly. It's basically going to go somewhere here in this region. And then let's just kinda, yeah, there we go. So I'm holding it with my thumb and it's kinda stuck to that material a little bit. Uh, you probably can't see any of this. There we go, see I'm holding it with my thumb. I'm gonna get a Sharpie here and just mark the edges of this. But yeah, if we do like, uh, what, like three eighths hole or something, that'll give us plenty of wiggle room. Excellent. Go. I'm just gonna check and make sure our holes are lining up here for the heat sink. That looks pretty good. So now we can slide this guy in here. And there we go. We have the thing reassembled. We've got the covers put back on both ends. And these two screws here go through to the inside to hold everything on there. And seems to be mounted pretty solidly. But all we should have to do now is lower the seat pan back down in here. Yeah, see we've got we've got clearance here on this side. You might be able to see, I don't know. And there we go. Now our holes line up for the seat pan. And we have our little module down here tucked out of the way. Just enough clearance on that light. Okay, um, I'm gonna work on getting this put together and then I'll be back to show the end result. I need to do some adjusting and things. Okay, all my video lights have died, but right now what I'm working on is running the wire from the speakers in the back and then also the power wire. Again, this box is going to be hanging right here. So I'm getting all of the speaker wires and the power feed wire tucked into the factory cable run here into the front. As you can see, there's a lot of dust under here. I'll probably fire up the air compressor and clean that off, but we're getting dangerously close to firing this thing up. Okay, we have our power cable here run up into this box. Now what we're gonna do is attach it to this switch right here. And I think that should be fairly easy. We just need to run a jumper from here down to one of these terminals on the output of the 12 volt side. Cause this thing only runs on 12 volts. It does not run on 24, but that's why we have a power converter. So gonna do that real quick. Okay. Um, it's kind of dark over here, but we got the wiring done. I didn't have any terminals, so I just temporarily did the twist the wire around the screw and tighten it sort of arrangement. But, uh, I think we're ready to power this up. Oh, we need to plug in the remote. Oh, it's up there. Um, okay. Take 37. We have the remote wired up. I haven't figured out where I'm putting this yet. So the wire just runs over there, but let's go ahead and turn everything on. And see what we get here. Wait for the beeps for the cameras. That tells us the power supply is going. As I recall before, this might be loud, so. Bluetooth. Yeah. It's connected. So let's turn this down. And then let's find some music that I know will not trigger copyright. Okay, so the one obnoxious thing with this is when you switch modes, the voice is extremely loud, but we have classical music. Ooh, we're done syncing, okay. All right, here we go. 
Here, it's going to be loud. Auxiliary input. Yeah. Bluetooth. Bluetooth is connected. And even if you turn down the volume, it's still really loud. I'm going to have to figure out what to do about that. So, anyways, um, here is random music. It seems to work. Okay, my SD card filled up, but I think we're we're done. For right now, I just coiled up the remote and I'm just dangling it right here. I think I'm just going to like, I don't know, stick it right here or something for now. I haven't figured out the best spot to uh, put it yet, but I'm gonna clean up all my tools here. Then I'm gonna hop in the Amy Systems chair and I'm gonna show you everything we got installed here. Actually, the base isn't too bad. You just gotta turn it up a ways. Okay, I'll be back. Okay, all lighting problems aside, because I still have no lights that are charged. Um, we have speakers on this thing. And we're, we're, we're playing the uh, music from my licensing company here, but you know, they seem to work all right. They, uh, here, I'll turn this down a little bit. They don't stick out beyond the back of the chair. They're pretty much right in line with the rear caster arms. So I think that should be fine. And then as far as the armrest tilting up, no clearance issues there at all. And I think we can recline. I should probably test that. So let's recline a bit. And yeah, no problems there at all. And our power box over here, we've got the main power output and then for the stereo there. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else we need to figure out here. I guess, I guess mounting the remote is gonna be something I gotta do. For right now, it's just kinda dingling right there. But these, uh, try not to run over things here. Uh, here. Oh. Uh, smashing into stuff, okay. You would think for as much stuff as I've gotten rid of, there'd be more room in here, but yeah, they seem to be working all right. Speakers. The only problem is that voice is extremely loud when you change modes and I cannot figure out how to turn it off. So if we want to go to the radio or something, shield your ears. FM radio. Yeah, there's nothing you can do about that, I guess. Hmm, jazz. Auxiliary input. Bluetooth. Yeah, but... Bluetooth is connected. Okay, thank you. But I didn't have to hook up the antennas. The FM radio works without an antenna pretty well, actually. The Bluetooth works pretty well without the antenna. So, um, yeah, I think I don't need to worry about those. I should probably go outside and do a test or something, but um, there's a lot of people around here. So I'll probably wind up going back to the bus and doing that later or something. I don't know. Like I said, I'm, I'm extremely scatterbrained right now. I'm just happy to have music on this thing. I'm going to be playing it constantly. <laughs> oh, I guess I didn't really show too much. The, the wires here, I've got them tucked down inside the chair, ran them down here. Followed underneath. Um, can't really see any of the wires anywhere, so I, I'm a little bit meticulous with that. But anyways, I'm uh, I'm gonna start editing this footage, and then yeah. Oh, food! I need to get food. Okay, I'll be back. So yes, they do work fairly well. They're really loud, but also I'm amazed how clear the audio is. You know, different stereo systems have uh, different types of music they work best with, but I found using the equalizer on the phone here, you can actually dial stuff down pretty well. So anyways, um, it's like nine o'clock at night now or something, and I'm going to finish editing this, and then I think we'll call that good. So anyways, thanks for watching. 
And, oh, by the way, I, I keep forgetting, I, I need to make a little commercial or advertisement. The Permobile ICS light shades, those are for sale on the website, totallynormalshop.com. Um, I don't even know if I have another Permobile in here right now to compare with, but anyways, if you're tired of being blinded by these things, I got you covered. That's all for now, and I will catch you Thursday on the live stream to do the finger pointing thing. See ya!